we have a confrontation. <laughs> Two distinct ways of the world at work here. We've got Pilate, a governor, powerful, aligned with the Roman government, paid by the Roman government, part of the Roman government. They ruled the land with an iron fist, as was crucifixion. Any insurrectionist, anyone who defied Rome was set on a cross or set out on the outskirts of town to show people, this is what happens to you if you cross Rome. Don't you dare. And we have Jesus. Very different way of powerful. A vulnerable man who spoke silently, quietly, prayed often, alone. Met with people forgotten, unknowns, second class, the scourge of society. And yet, he was the one who lost this battle with Rome. The two powers, head to head, no contest, as it seems. And yet, Joseph of Arimathea, one of the Jews who represented those who crucified him, was different. We talked last Wednesday about Zacchaeus, that tax collector, those tax collectors, those evildoers, those scum of the earth. And yet Jesus dined with Zacchaeus and found Zacchaeus to be a righteous man, fair in his dealings with people. We find the captain of the guard looking at Jesus in a little different light. Maybe looking at power in a little different light. Maybe there's more truth to Jesus than truth to the ways of Rome and oppressive governments. How does it pan out for our Lord and Savior? He doesn't say much. In a world of words, he doesn't shine very well. There certainly were witnesses against him. A lot of witnesses against him. And none in his defense. He was alone. He had to defend himself. And even that, very few words were spoken. We look at that and say, say something. Defend yourself, man. You've got more work to do, don't you? And yet, nothing. They let go an insurrectionist, a murderer who, who dealt directly with Rome in a, in a negative kind of way, using power and force, and he was let go. And Jesus, the peacemaker, was tried and hung and killed. That doesn't make sense. If Rome really wanted to make a point, they would crucify Barabbas out there and show the world that when you're an insurrectionist, if you cause murder against Rome, this is what's going to happen to you. And yet, he's let go. The chief priest would rather have him let go. Perhaps maybe he wasn't antagonistic to their power. The chief priests and the Judeans and whoever else had power at the time. But Jesus was a thorn in their side. And we think, how can that happen? Jesus healed the people that were in your parishes. Jesus built up your community so that you'd have people in your worship spaces that you could give to when you need. This doesn't make sense. Barabbas, in the short run, he triumphed. Jesus, in the short run, he was killed. However, in the long view of things, who really triumphed? And what was the way of triumph? We never would have thought it in a million years, would we have? If we were there at the time and we lived 2,000 years to see what had happened after this man died and was resurrected, his way of life, his way of love, his way of showing the revelation of God, who God is like, this is the one in the long term really triumphed and still does. 
And we have a sense of, you know, we see sometimes in, in nearsighted ways. We can't see the, the, the future. Uh, we don't see sometimes how uh, peacemaking uh, makes a difference at all. Perhaps not in the short run. But perhaps following his example, maybe in the long run. We find that life can change pretty quickly. It certainly did for Jesus. One moment he was out healing and preaching. The next minute he was hauling his cross piece up the hill and being hung on a cross and dying. That's definitely changing. Almost like the weather in Wisconsin, but not quite as much. How do we weather the storms like that in our lives? How do we weather the storms with grace like Jesus did? How do we as followers follow the way? How do we become long-sighted, far-sighted instead of near-sighted? Well, at times there has to be action taken now. Yes. But play it out to the end what is best for us. Where do the disciples now look for Jesus? Where do we look for Jesus in our lives? When our lives change like the weather, where do we find Jesus in our lives? That is the question we ask ourselves. Jesus, the peacemaker, the healer, the prophet, the rabbi, came to his people then, radically changed the lives and hearts of people then and now and throughout history. This is the God that we worship. This is the man who sacrificed all for us. And on this Palm Sunday, we throw our branches down and hail him as our king. A different kind of king. One worth following. Amen.